From my smartphone to yours, I'm Cast in Love, here from the Surrey Story Garden Studios in Costa Mesa, California. It's Friday! It's finally Friday! What's the difference between lust and love? We get them confused. What are your turn-ons? What are your turn-offs? Do you know what really gets you hot under the collar, baby? Are you always dating the person that frankly sucks in bed? Are you and your mate not mating anymore? Do you even know what turns you on? I have that answer. With a date of birth, I can tell you anything. We call it Secrets of Birthdays, the Love and Lust Report. Find out your birthday secrets today, available online at secretsofbirthdays.com. Good morning and namaste and welcome to Namaste Today. I'm your host and spiritual life coach, Christopher Witecki. My modality is psychic astrology and my mission is to stand in my heart and help other people stand in theirs. I'm also here to help unite the light on earth and bring us all together. This webisode is for Friday, Friday, March 25th, 2016. And today the Great Human Walk has reached Step 5 Aries. Welcome, my friends. Such a pleasure to be a soul service. Thank you so much for showing up for me. I am so grateful to be able to show up for you. We finally reached the end of the week. Thank Goddess. It's Friday. I am feeling it. I have to say the lunar eclipse was icky. I have to say that early ego stuff is icky. So this is so much better to be moving out of that ego stuff. I think today is going to be a cloudy day. Uh, we're going to be very introspective. But first, a shout out. If you are a light walker, you have a gift. If you make a product, if you have a service, a retreat, if you want to promote what you do and share with the world who you are and how you bring light, I would love to show and tell about it. So if you're interested, come on down to soulgarden.tv and click under uh, About, uh, Share Your Gifts. You can see how I will help you. Uh, and that's also good for me, too, because people start showing up to see cool stuff on my show. So it's win-win, right? That's spirituality. Now, looking at today's vibe, Today's vibe will be cloudy and rather pensive, is what I'm thinking. Very uh, introspective. That's because step five is ruling the day. And so we're in our minds and we're thinking about behavior, action, what we want to do. It's a day of processing. It's a good day to get information and receive information. Now, my heart is seeking to understand what's next. My heart is seeking to connect the dots, to discover my limit also, and to not uh, you know, over or underestimate myself. I think that's the kind of processing we're doing today. That's because the sun is at step five, Aries. I'm feeling polarized, very black and white, absolute. No time or space for bullshit. Not interested in any damn toleration of crap. I just want to move on. <laughs> I have really no negotiations for certain things, and I'm solid about that. That's because the moon is in Scorpio today. I'm open to what I love and what flows the easiest. Uh, I'm open to what's my spiritual highest good. I'm open to what's comfortable. I'm open to what makes me feel beautiful. I'm open to what is artful. That's because Venus is at step 16, Pisces today. I'm thinking about my spiritual cause. I'm thinking about my spiritual mission. My spiritual action I need to take. What is my call to action? That's because Mercury is at step 7. Now you can be listening for that or you can be processing that. It's best to listen though with Mercury at Step 7 Aries. I am receiving new information. I am opening up new to new lessons. I am discovering a new story. That's because Mars has finally progressed to Step 6 Sagittarius. So our ego now is open and ready to receive or at least ready to bow its head. We've been humbled. <laughs> okay, so now we bow our head and we're open. I'm deciding what flows the best today, what beliefs serve my spirit, what beliefs my heart is willing to stand by, and this is all due to Saturn at step 16 Sagittarius, which now retrogrades as of today. So we get a six-month break from new belief structure building. So your joy question, you choose to accept it today, 
is to feel out your emotional limits. Feel out what's not going to work and what is going to work. Because honestly, even though we're doing ego-based work, the ego is really the biggest baby in us. It can be such a baby when it loses, such a baby, such a downer, such a party pooper. This is part of the ego behavior. So the more comfortable you make your ego in this transition, uh, the easier it will be for both of you, <laughs> your ego and your emotions. So feel out your emotional limits, pamper yourself through the weekend, cradle this new ego that's being born. All right. So we are on the path to serious joys, I like to say. Today we're going to be talking about step two, I feel. Yesterday I did step one. Before that I did step zero. I will be archiving these on my website. It's just little webisodes so you can go back and review them. So without further ado, let's move on to step two. And welcome to the next episode of the 11 Steps to Serious Joy. We're on the path to Serious Joy. And if you don't know, Serious Joy is based on awareness. I've learned in my coaching the people into inner spiritual, uh, better inner spiritual life, that it comes down to what we choose to be aware of and what we choose to ignore. It's also been my study that if you are aware of the 11 Steps to Serious Joy, If you're aware of all these states of awareness, if these states of awareness are united uh, toward a a common heartfelt goal, you will law of attract all the situations and experiences that you want, and they will be whole and in integrity. And that's a lot of our issues. A lot of us do manifest, but they're not in integrity because we have skipped one of these conscious steps. So today we're going to talk about step two, which is I feel. So far we've talked about Uh, I protect, which is step zero, holding space for whatever magic or experience you want on earth, setting your limits ahead of time. Step one, you then fill that space with love, particularly self-love, how much you love yourself, how much you love being yourself, how much you enjoy being you. And today, we move on to step two, which is I feel. And this is what happens automatically. The truth is, is that we... Uh, the next step opens organically when we conclude the first step. So when we conclude, I protect, our hearts start to open up organically. Once we feel safe, our hearts start to open organically. You don't always have to call even to I love. It just starts to move into that. But then you can be aware of that and move into the next. Once you are filling your heart with lots of love, you start to feel that love. You move into step two. Step two happens automatically. You will feel that love. But feelings is a lot uh, is a much broader step than just this you know progression. By nature of what feelings are, feelings um, first of all are the Holy Spirit or a Holy Ghost. So you know they say the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. Who knew they were talking about feelings when they said Holy Ghost? I thought the Holy Ghost was some ghost flying around the room or something, right? Turns out the Holy Ghost is your feelings. Your feelings are the ghost of your soul. Your emotion is your energy in motion. Okay? And this in astrology is represented by the moon. The earth has a moon. What does the moon do? It reflects light back on the earth. What kind of light? Light coming from the heart, from the heart, bounces back on the earth. So moonlight is our heart's intentions reflected back on us. Oh, right? Our emotions are our heart's intentions reflected back on us. Our feelings that we put into motion. Okay? So emotions are not to be feared. Uh, But most of my clients have issues with allowing their feelings to blow through them so that they can get a real read on everything. Just because you feel something could go wrong doesn't mean it will go wrong. Your feelings are just telling you, hey, this is an issue. So the interesting thing about the Earth and the Earth experience is the moon is nearly one-third the size of the Earth. That's a big mass of energy or a big mirror pointing down at us. And kind of in proportion to space-time, this creates a very powerful emotional field on Earth. So powerful that the tides move up and the tides move down from the gravity of the moon. 
Therefore, human beings have very powerful emotions. And, you know, in my intergalactic energies that I have heard, you know, the psychic gossip is other systems like the Pallades, other systems like the Syrian Cluster, these other alien civilizations, um, apparently they don't have one-third size moon emotional volume turned up so much. Apparently that's new to them. So that's a big reason people come to vacation on Earth. It's because the emotional field is groovy, man, and really intense. So all other states of awareness report to your feelings. All states of awareness report to your feelings, okay? And consciousness builds out this way. It is I protect, zero. Then there is I love, so you have the heart, right? Ah, oh, You have your heart there. That's the heart of who you are. That is the inner king or the inner queen, okay? Then you have your feelings. That's the next layer. Now your feelings are one with the heart because they conjunct the heart. Step two is right next to step one. So emotions and heart are one. The, one. the emotions are always feeling. Then from this point on, emotions connect to your belief. And belief connects to your belonging. And everything from this point up in the architecture of incarnation goes through emotion. Emotion is this cloudy field of energy that is half in your soul and half out of you. And is literally going in and out of you, in and out of you. It's also going in and out of other people's emotional fields. So when our emotions blow through your emotions, we feel each other. But if you are not aware of your emotions without other people, then you don't know if you're feeling yourself or you're feeling them. That's where boundaries and self-awareness become extremely important. So emotions pick up on other people's emotions. Emotions pick up on all other states of awareness. Emotions pick up on everything. Therefore, the master, the Jedi, like Yoda, or Buddha, or any master who's sitting there like this, what do you suppose they're doing? They are listening to their feelings. Because their feelings are telling them everything. Think about it. Your body has pain. Your subconscious gives you the heebie-jeebies. Your ego gets angry. These are all the voices of the different states of awareness that come through feeling. That's why it's so important to be able to nurture and ground and, uh, and you know, uh, invest in constantly tiding to your feelings. This is why monkeys are always picking stuff out of each other's back. They're, they're kind of calming each other down like, it's okay, it's okay, you know what I mean? Human beings need the same stuff. And a lot of people don't do the work to emotionally nurture. All masters on earth work through their feelings. So if you're a master on earth, according to my research, you were born with the sun step 20, 20 degrees and up. If you are 20 degrees and up, your whole life is with emotion. You live in the emotion and you direct everything from the emotion. Okay? It takes a master to do that because you have to be grounded, in touch with your feelings, not be projecting, have all the 11 states down. So, you know... And before you're aware of all of that, masters are total babies. Procrastinators take forever because they're living in their emotion and they're not doing this groundwork of everything before step 20. So in other words, to master earth, you must master your emotions. Now, human beings actually communicate through their emotions. Uh, believe it or not, if you, you know, you, if you pay attention, you can see a person look at you with hurt eyes and immediately we're like... <gasps> You know, we get so much information from the emotional fields across, and we don't pay attention to this, but we can, and I do. Now, I think all of your greatest actors and actresses, Meryl Streep, Dustin Hoffman, cancers, because they understand emotion, they can call up emotion, and they're communicating through their emotional field through the screen, literally coming through the screen in their emotional field. This is the power of step two, I feel. I feel is the cancer race. So if you're a cancer, you live in step two. That's your... You live in emotion. You may be a master, you may be a junior. You still live in emotion all day just like the masters. So uh, this is where it comes out. So emotions communicate beyond words, gestures, and facial expressions. Um, and the next thing that's important about emotion is, in my research, emotion is what takes something to go abundant. So you can think about something. You can, uh, you know, you can uh, you know, build something. You can invest in something. But if you're not emotional about it, it's not going to sell to many people. The one-to-many ratio, if you want to be rich or famous or anything with many, you must be very emotional. 
because it is the emotion that hits people, it hits people, that hits people, that tells people. It is the emotion, the passion. So a lot of my clients got a lot of great Aquarian, cool, amazing Atlantis knowledge, but they're still learning how to get passionate about it. And if you look at the Republicans, for instance, in the United States politics, very passionate uh, uh, party, and they're coming together by passion mostly. Democrats, not so much. So uh, motion is what gets things going. The last thing I just want to point out is that emotion uh, is the is the tippy toe of consciousness. So the very you know the eleven steps of serious joy. When you get to step eleven, one plus one makes two. So in my experience, when we are conjuring up this amazing thing on life, what do we focus on? How it all feels. How it all feels is the cherry on top. It's where you live when you want to call up some major stuff. You focus on the feeling. You stay focused on the feeling. If you're an Olympic athlete and you're going to do an Olympic, you know, go perform the Olympics, what do you focus on? The feeling of being in that body, the feeling of performing. You can't think about it all. You have to focus on the feeling. So emotion becomes the final final. Now, uh, looking at natal astrology, the opposite of emotion is decision. So when you decide, you shut off your emotion. When you decide to shut off your emotion, when you decide to do something, your decisions are what will automatically block feeling, and consciousness does that as a sole courtesy. So sometimes you have to undo decisions to be cold, undecide. And if you have problems getting into your feelings, there's probably a decision somewhere that's keeping you out. All right, folks, this is On Our Path to Serious Joy, and I will see you in the next uh, episode to talk about more. And welcome to the Zen Den. Let's first take three breaths and connect to spirit. Mm, there's a lot of like little mini anxiety in there to kind of clear out. I don't know if you guys are feeling that, but I think that's just ego apprehension, the step nine energy of Mars. And that's actually what the planet is, by the way, that came to me was Mars. We'll take a look at Mars and see what that is. But first, an affirmation for yourself and for the weekend. I am mindful of my intuitive actions today. Let's see where they lead. I am mindful of my intuitive actions today. Let's see where they lead. Now, what I mean by intuitive actions, it's like, I get this feeling I should go to work. That's an intuitive action. I get this feeling I should do this. I get this feeling I should do that. And this is actually where I really started to learn that I was psychic was I would listen to what I was intuitive that I should do in a given day and do it and see if it worked out versus plan, 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 plan. Uh, and force, 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 you know. So now through the weekend, I think it's good to listen to your intuitive actions, your hunches. A lot of us who are action-based people go this way. Our intuition is, you know, plays out through us allowing us to play it out. Just be careful, of course, don't anything crazy. So let's take a look at the overhead and see what the planets have to say. Today the sun is at step five. Step five is I think. So we're trying to get our mind around uh, what our ego changes the, the whole week we went through. You know, the lunar eclipse. We're just trying to get our mind around it. Now our mind, excuse me, I'm tearing up today. I'm like our, mind, our Mercury, our mind is at step seven, which is I sense. And this is part of the reason why I built into... Uh, today to listen to our intuitive sense today about where to act because our mind is literally focusing on the intuitive senses of where to act and what to do next. Now tomorrow on Saturn day, step six will rule the day and on Sunday, step seven will rule the day. Step seven is I sense, so you couldn't pick a better step than I sense for a Sunday if you're a spiritual person on Sunday. So uh, it's, it kind of works out that way. I find that um, step sevens usually find, f f come on Wednesdays or Sundays, just as a weird thing. So what we're coming to over the weekend is we're trying to get our mind around it. Saturday is step six, I receive. So I receive is really the token here. I receive is the opposite of Libra, the opposite of Aries, which is Libra. 
So it's the point which we can open up. The point which we can open up is the point when our ego can bow and it can receive. We're not worried about being taken alive. We're not worried about gifts with strings attached. When we can totally receive someone else's gift, we can receive. So the I receive point is really the important point, and that's what Spirit brought up with me with Mars. Let's take a look at Mars. Mars is at step six, I receive. So literally, our ego is ready to receive what we deserve. We're ready to accept and receive uh, what's owed to us. And to get there, you have to find a way for your ego to bow. And the magic words is gratitude. Gratitude is the attitude of receiving. So, you know, if you don't know how to bow your head, simply be grateful, be grateful for everything you have, be grateful for everything you have. Staying in that posture of gratitude for what you have keeps you open to receiving, um, even if you're not sure where it is or even if your ego is defensive about it. And this is what uh, Spirit said to me when I went into uh, meditation just now with the three breasts, was that this weekend everyone should bow their heads. Now, it's Easter this weekend. How funny is that? And it's Easter on Sunday, step seven. How funny is that? And what are we receiving? The rebirth, right? So it's fascinating how this lines up. You can't write this shift, okay? And it always lines up this way. And I don't know if the church, when it chooses... When the church chooses Easter, I don't know, they might be using astrology and just have never told us. Now, the moon is in Scorpio. Look at this. 1121, when it starts to get fun, the moon is at zero degrees Scorpio. That's so crazy because Scorpio is only ruled by one degree, zero. Okay, so there it is, and it's right at my birth time. But basically, our emotions are in Scorpio, so we have to emotionally put boundaries in our feelings. We have to basically set ourselves up to not feel so vulnerable in the new ego. We have to emotionally put up uh, protection to make sure that we don't get stump you know, we don't stumble upon the sprouts of this new ego we're building in Aries, this rebirth. And people ask, Chris, what is protection? Protection is thinking ahead for your feelings. Will your feelings get upset if it's put in that church? Will your feelings be upset if you're over here? You know, is the baby upset in the sunlight? If it disrupts your feelings, maybe it's not worth it right now. Maybe you can do something so you're not disrupted. The point is to keep your emotional field flowing, your energy in motion, so you can read who you are and not be uncomfortable with who you are. So you want to be comfortable in your own skin. You want to self-nurture. And you want to be conscious of where your boundaries and limits are to get there. Now, um, the last thing I'll point out is Saturn is now retrograde at step 16. It will be retrograde for six months. This adds to a seven. Very interesting that it stops right here at the seven and then right before Easter does a retrograde, right? So that is the ballet of the universe. What it means is we must be decisive about what we love, step one, and what we want to receive, step six. Decisive means, okay, I've decided I'm going to accept the help from this person. Decisive is, okay, I've decided I'm going to open up to this. I'm going to bow my head. I'm going to be grateful for this. And, it's in my, and if it's in your highest spiritual good, if it adds to a seven, it's right. If it's compassionate, seven, it's right. If it's merciful, it's right. If it gets you off the hook and you have no mercy, regrets, completely free of all responsibility from the past, it's right. That's seven, okay? So spirit is saying, you know, be decisive as you build this new ego be merciful to yourself. Be Let the old past go. Open up to accept and receive. Open up to where you can accept and receive. And as Saturn retrogrades for the next six months, we'll see if you were right. <laughs> okay? If you weren't right, Saturn goes direct and you got time to direct and change it. That's kind of how it works. Okay, I'm tearing up today. I don't know why. All right, that is all I have for the weekend and our overhead projector. Um, for those who are watched over my personal sensei network, today at 3 p.m., your eye candy will be um, <clears throat> where Saturn retrograde will be showing you a rewrite. So I'll be talking about in the next six months where you should accept to expect to see and receive in your life. Um, and that is, of course, if you're decisive that you decide you love it, you're going to open up to receiving it. It's in your highest spiritual good. So I'll be helping you understand what area of life that is so you can be conscious of it as we now retrograde and start to receive. All right, my friends, it's such a pleasure to be a spiritual life coach and to be of soul service. Uh, for those who are Christians, happy Easter to you. May your heart be filled with love and joy. 
I am such a righteous Jesus fan, honestly. Uh, it's just not what I, you know, it's, a, it's just not what I teach in this moment. But uh, so grateful for all the light workers, and I do believe Jesus was here, and I am grateful. All right, friends, have a great weekend. I love you, and live, love, be. So.